Hi, welcome to another episode of Photo Tips. Today we're going to talk about something that a lot of people have a lot of misunderstanding about, and that's file formats. While most of your digital cameras default to JPEG, that's not always the best choice. JPEG has some advantages. It's uh, most of your editing software will read and write it by default. It's portable across Linux, uh, Windows, Macintosh, you name it. Any, pretty much anything reads JPEG. Um, the downfall is it's a, it's a lossy compression scheme where actually data that the algorithm thinks that you don't need to view the file in a close representation of the way you took it is actually thrown out. So each time you load that file into your editor, make a change to it and save it, you're degrading the quality of your image. Now there's another format that doesn't do that, and that's TIFF, Tag Image File Format. It's been around a long time. It stores in 8 or 16 bits per pixel, depending on your settings that you choose. And it's, it's non-destructive. It's got, it uses the LZH compression format when you store it in a compressed TIFF and it's portable across operating systems as well. It's a good format, it's, it takes a lot of space, um, but if you make a change to your file, it's actually stored, or it may actually manipulates the image data. The one that's overlooked, and it's my personal favorite actually, is the RAW format. If you have one of the higher end point and shoots or a digital SLR, you should have a RAW file format option for your camera and that stores your data in 12 or 16 bits per pixel as well just like uh, TIFF files. It takes, generally takes less space because most of your RAW formats have a compressed version of it. Um, the manipulations, if you choose a saturated setting on your camera or um, a ch different tone curve and we'll cover those in a later episode what a tone curve is but different settings like that that stuff is stored in the header of the file and the image data is left pretty well untouched so you can make a lot of adjustments to your file without actually destroying or degrading the original image much like a negative is for a photo finisher they take your negative and make a print, but they don't actually manipulate the negative. You can take it to another photo finisher and they could interpret that negative a different way and you could come out with a whole different set of colors, uh, different exposure and so on. Um, the RAW format has a downfall, at least one downfall, but uh, what doesn't? But some people think that because some camera manufacturers don't publish the specifications for the RAW file that um, in the future you may not be able to get software to edit those files. There's a movement out. Uh, check out openraw.org if you're interested in finding out some information about um, a movement to try to get camera manufacturers to either use the same format or to at least publish their uh, raw format so independent software vendors in the future can ensure that we have software that will read and write those files, manipulate those files. Um, Raw files are another downfall of those is you have to have special software. Generally your camera will come with some software to read and write raw images. You generally read them, do manipulations and save them in another format, although some software will save it back into the raw file itself like Nikon Capture or Nikon View. Um, Adobe has a good editor. Um, but it's actually a plug-in for uh, Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. It's called Adobe Camera Raw. And they're pretty good about keeping that thing updated. As new models of digital cameras come out, they're pretty well constantly updating that plug-in that you can download off their website for free, free updates. That's supported in CS2 and above, I believe, and Elements 4. I was mentioning how you have a lot of latitude to do adjustments with the raw file formats. Let's take a look at some damn examples here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here we've got four samples that we took. They were taken just a few seconds apart. Um, let's concentrate on these darker ones since they were purposefully un underexposed. The only difference is this one is taken with JPEG. It's 8 bits per pixel. This one is taken with RAW, compressed RAW, which is 12 bits per pixel. The exposure information is the same and they were taken less than one minute apart. Uh, let's edit the JPEG first. 
I'm going to edit it using an icon editor since that's one that I'm familiar with. Uh, most of the software comes with your camera. This particular editor is a uh, one you have to pay in addition, but the the regular Nikon editor comes free with Nikon View. It's a download, or it actually comes with most of your cameras. As you can see, most of our uh, advanced features are disabled in this software for JPEG files. We do have photo effects. That's your standard brightness adjustment. So let's crank up the brightness some until we get pretty pleasing uh, exposure over most of the image. That looks pretty good. Let's take a look at our cloud. All of our detail is gone. Let's see the same file. Let's look at the, the raw file version of it. Zoom in on our cloud. We have the same photo effects, but if you look, we've got advanced raw, white balance, noise reduction, a lot of other options that are available. The advanced raw and the white balance adjustments are what actually make the raw images shine. Let's, let's do a little exposure compensation which is essentially doing the same adjustments that you would have made in the camera to make the correct image to start with. If you have a little problem getting your exposure right you can tweak it with this. Now that's a pretty good looking image right there but if you look we've still got a lot of details in our cloud we've got uh, a lot of other options available sharpening tone color mode saturation etc um, let's take a look at the sharpness of the image let's take we'll see these markings on the side of the dam and they're pretty good pretty legible but if we look at the same markings on the JPEG file there's a lot of detail that's been lost in this file as opposed to the raw. This is the data that comes straight off of the camera sensor essentially whereas the JPEG has been manipulated by the little JPEG engine and the CPU in the camera. And I believe that's uh, due to it having a, a small CPU with not much power and it's using a fairly lossy algorithm to be able to save the file do a conversion in it pretty short time frame but there's a big difference in your file format right there as you can see there are quite a few benefits to using the raw file format um, quite a number of editors out there's some good open source ones out do a search on the web um, anyway if you have, as always if you have any tips or comments Please give me an email at tmartin at amateurlogic.tv and we'll see you next time on Photo Tips.